In order to keep bringing you guys tons of free content, we work with brand partners who you'll hear from in this episode, including an advertisement from Zopa Bank. Welcome back to another episode of the Talk 20s podcast. Today, I am joined by the wonderful Molly Marsh. Of course, many of you will know Molly from appearing on season 10 of Love Island and being the only Islander to ever return to the villa after being dumped. In this episode, we chat about life before and after Love Island, how to follow your dreams and get over big fails. So buckle in for another amazing episode. And whilst you're at it, hit that subscribe or follow button and tell us what you think in the comments. So, hey, Molly, we always start the podcast by looking back at either a photo or a video from this time last year. Something that our audience haven't seen before or might not know about. Have you got something that you can share with us? A little scroll back. Let's head back to this time last year. I know this time last year I was in Panto. Okay. It's fairy. So living my best life. Was that back where, like, where you live, like locally? Is it Manchester? Okay. Yeah. Milton Arena. Milton Arena. That's massive. It must have been huge, no? Uh, or no? No, it's not that big. Arena sounds big. Yeah, it's not that big. Oh, okay, I've not been. <laughs> I can make it sound huge, yeah. Arena. Arena. Massive. Massive fan Sold out every day. <laughs> um, an interesting one I have here is actually my audition video for Big Brother. So I auditioned for Big Brother before Love Island. Okay. So it all came about in a very weird way. Yeah. But this time last year was literally me sat... I mean, I had no idea that you'd audition for Big Brother. No, I haven't mentioned it. Okay. I kind of, Big Brother was every, like, all I wanted to do. I was like, I want to go on Big Brother. Like, such a cool show, like the challenges. Yeah. And then I just didn't, I got like my first Zoom interview, didn't really get anywhere. And I was thinking, we'll just see where this goes. And then out pops out of nowhere the idea of Love Island. So the plan was never to go on Love Island in the first place. No, I really wanted okay. Big Brother. Okay, can I watch your video? <laughs> you mean you can? I did try to get it to load then, but it's... what do you have to do for a Big Brother like um, interview? Um, what your friends think about you? What you think about yourself? What type of person are you in your friendship group? Um, if you were stuck in a lift, who would you want to be stuck in with, and why? What was your answer? I think I said my granddad. Oh, that's cute. And I think I said something random about my granddad. Um, but I, I didn't get on the show, so maybe that's yeah. why I made the wrong answer. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should have said, like, someone, something random. Maybe. What do you think I'm looking for, like, when casting directors are, like, casting these shows? I just think real individuality. Someone yeah. who is like, I've never met anyone like you before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially if you're going to throw all of those people into a house. Like, that is, yeah. that makes for good TV, doesn't it? Yeah, They, they absolutely. know what they're doing when they're casting these shows. Then it ended it, like, really cheesy. <laughs> Love it! <laughs> ew. No, it's not ew. That's cute. I do feel like you give big sis, big sister or little sister vibes though. Like, especially if you and your sis. It's so cute. Like, would you have gone on Big Brother like if if you'd have got that option instead of Love Island? Yeah, I feel like I actually, my mum once said to me, she was like, if they both got handed to you on a plate, what would you do? And I yeah. did have a moment of, uh, I don't know, because they've got they're such two fun shows. Yeah. I never saw myself on Love Island. I did. I could, I could see myself in Big Brother. Yeah. But now I'm so happy it's happened the way it has. Yeah. I could, and now I couldn't have seen it the other way around at yeah. all. I think I would have been swallowed in Big Brother. What? What makes you that? I don't know. I just feel like I. I don't think I'm huh, like a big enough, a big enough personality for Big Brother. I feel like you've got to really, really like stand out in Big yeah. Brother in that sense. There's a lot of huge personalities. Well, there was here. I didn't watch much of it, but mm. like I watched the beginning when most people came in and it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Hardcore. Because I think you didn't find it like the easiest in Love Island either, oh, did no, you? Like, no, yeah. no. I really struggled in Love Island. Yeah. But it all turned out good. Yeah. You go, Zach, no. Absolutely. Yeah. You go through these things, the outcome. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Well, most people will remember, obviously, for you being like the only Islander that like went back into the villa. Like mm. that's like crazy, but I'm, I'm guessing that like you feel like that was obviously meant to be because how is everything going with like you and Zach now? Oh, perfect. I'm very, very happy. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of life struggles that come with having a relationship in the public eye, like yeah. a lot of pressures, a lot of like opinions. But do you know what? We, we've put ourselves in that position to have them. So it's mm-hmm. like, it is what it is. We learn through a lot of things now that we'd never have gone through if we weren't in this situation. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's definitely difficulties, but it's, it's all going really well. And mm-hmm. we're happy. Who'd have thought it find love? On Love Island, like actually, like I know. when you really think about it. Because who's still together from Series 10? Um, I think Whitney and Lachlan. I think that's it. And you Maybe guys. Ella and Ty? I'm not mm. sure. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Crazy. Welcome across, guys. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned there that you also did panto as well because for those people that might not not know the whole backstory, you went to drama school. Like, mm-hmm. did you always think your life would like end up this way where you ended up doing like a lot of like obviously you do TikTok mm. and content creation and stuff like that. Did you feel like your life was going down this path? I think I knew it'd always go down some sort of social media y television y route at one point. Mm-hmm. I did musically, which is the one before TikTok, when I was in high school. So that was before I even went to drama school. So that's kind of been there since yeah. day dot. Yeah. Um then drama school came about. Then I come out and it was COVID once I graduated and it was like, okay, it's COVID. So now I'm thrown back to social media again. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I've been pulled onto social media every time. It's like, maybe I've got a call in that I need to do this more and more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just kind of came from there. But your content, I would say, is different to quite a lot of Love Islanders that we see. Like you haven't come out of Love Island. I mean, unless you've got something to announce today, you <laughs> haven't done like a great big PLT deal no. or anything like that. Do you think you will go down that route? No, no. Why not? I kind of said that to myself before. It's just not me. And I feel like yeah. if I did get that, it'd be something I have to really work out to make sure it's on brand with myself, not me being on brand with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I'm very picky and choosy with what I want to do and what I want to share and where I want it to go because don't get me wrong, you can easily jump onto a certain path yeah. and you can just ride with it and you can absolutely do that. Um, but I think I think doing what I'm doing now and being the way I am right now is going to be best for the long run. So mm-hmm. just... Even if it's not like... I think other things are like quick wins, aren't they? Mm. Like, oh, you know, it's for a bank check. You can do stuff like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, what's long-term plans for you? Like, what would you really like to do? My dream is always to be a children's TV presenter. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah, yeah. Um, whether that's now going to move to the YouTube side of things, I actually don't know because I know children's Most television kids watch now. T- my nephew's YouTube. four. He watches YouTube all day long. Yeah, like, Miss Rachel. Ryan's World. Like, yeah. literally yeah. loves it. Well, there's no British Miss Rachel. Yeah. So there is a gap here in the market she is, here. Everyone. I'm here. <laughs> so it's like, I am thinking about these type of things. Yeah. Um, but also doing more theatre. So trying to go down the route of, you know, staying with television. So like strictly mm-hmm. doing things where I can I can be performing, but still in this world yeah. in a sense of, yeah. Because I would say your content is probably the most PG of people that have been on the mm. Love Island like in the nicest way yeah. because it's like, yeah. you have your sister on a lot of your content as mm-hmm. well. And obviously she's grown up with you now. Like she's a bit older now, but like yeah. she was young when you were creating the content. And I think I've heard you say like, you used to create your content for young girls like yeah, her. And I'm yeah. guessing that's still the case. 100%, yeah. Before it was, if I meet people in public, it'd be like 13 year old girls. It was always the way. And now it's different because there's like a huge yeah. range of people that I meet now. But I've always just stuck to the people who were there from day one. They're still going to be here right now. So Mm -hmm. let's not forget who's watching and what would I want my sister to be watching? Really just stick with that. And obviously that can really contradict with Love Island. Like, well, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. But I did everything I can to stay PG on the show that it gives me no reason to now come out and, you know, Stop swearing or drinking or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You're also like massively into self-development, which I wouldn't have like really... Well, I just haven't really had you down for that. But like, yeah. I know you're so into it. Like, yeah, yeah. You've got your like My Mind Moment page, which I love. Like mm-hmm. I even reshared something about it like in the week and I was like, <laughs> love it. Um, but yeah, like what got you into like self-development and why is, why is it so interesting for you? I think... Before I dibble in and out, I loved going to, you know, do some meditation or yoga class. Mm-hmm. Like... A quick note from our sponsors, Zopa Bank, who are here to help you with your personal finance in the Zopa app. Zopa have a for you section on their app that gives you helpful, personalized insights like reviewing your subscriptions, checking for cheaper broadband and energy bills. The first thing that you need to do is link your accounts using open banking. Once your accounts are connected, the available data will let Zopa understand your finances and give you personalized insights. It will also analyze your credit file and check your Zopa eligibility. Best of all, it's all free and at your fingertips always. So you can make sure you're making the best, most informed choice with your money 24-7. Download the Zopa app now to find out more. But coming out of Love Island and like the impact, almost like the outside world had on me, I've been like, wow, I really need to now take a step back and take time for myself. And the way I've been doing that is getting into meditation more, really working on like grounding skills and going on self-development trips, which I never thought was a thing. But Mm -hmm. like I went on a week's retreat, um, literally doing breath work, journaling. Um, I've journaled since I was very young. and I think that's always helped me really get out my feelings and my emotions. But even coming out now, I'm struggling with anxiety and Mm -hmm. I'm taking therapy sessions. And there's so much that I'm wanting to work on on myself 
that I've realized within this past year, and especially from Love Island and being on the show that I've learned about myself, that now I'm just putting into place and I'm like, right, I'm going to really work on this and see where mm-hmm. I can go because I'm already seeing a difference. So mm-hmm. I love it. For someone that's like starting out on their like self-development journey then, and they've like started to be interested in it, maybe mm-hmm. they listen to a few podcasts, like what would be your biggest suggestions to someone who's like just getting into that? Um... I'd say the beginning is journal. I journal every yeah. single day. Like, I feel like get used to being open with your emotions. I never used to tell anyone anything. I'd never cry. I'd never even like happiness, anger, sadness. Nothing would be, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell. Um, but now I'm so overly emotional that like journaling through, if you read through my journal, you'd see a complete change. So I feel like really? if you start with journaling, Get your emotions out because then if you're going to talk to someone, you know exactly what you're going to talk about because you've already got it out on Mm -hmm. paper. It's a great way to start. And then just, I think social media is a huge one. Follow people who inspire you to watch them. Like get rid of people you look at on Instagram and think, ugh, or ugh, don't want to see that. Like just follow the, like why I started the quote page. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I come up with that, I was like, right, I've seen people do it before. It wasn't my own idea. I've seen a lot of people start a quotes page and I was like, I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it myself. Why not? And if I see a quote on a day where I'm like, this has helped me through my week, let's repost it or let's create my own. Mm -hmm. So. No, I loved it. I literally, something really spoke to me when I was on it the other day. I can't remember what's, I have to go back and and, and look at it, but it was like, I think it was like, if you like you already have it within you to do what it is you're trying to do or something like that. Yeah. Maybe I've really rephrased that wrong. But no, like, that's I'll use that one tonight. Yeah, Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> it was something, it was a pink one anyway. They're gorgeous. <laughs> I love them. But like, yeah, it really spoke to me. And I think, yeah, a lot of people like mock a quote, don't they? They're like, yeah. oh, like it's cheesy or like there's like different matches. But honestly, they have helped me in so many yeah. difficult times to just like reframe the way that I'm thinking. Yeah. Like for you, what are your tips? Like when you are having a day that's like, oh, like, yeah, it seems to be going wrong. Like, what are your tips to try and make yourself feel better? I think it's this cliche, everything happens for a reason, but I will stand by it. Like, mm. even if the worst things happen today, I'm telling you that's happened for a reason. Because if it had not happened, this would have happened. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've told myself that for so long that I'm really just like, I like as well, it's already written. So like- okay. Someone above, the gods, the angels, yeah. they know what's happening next week. It's already mm-hmm. written. It's already a plan. And I feel like everything will happen for a reason. So don't stress about it. Does don't that panic. help you like deal with whatever's coming your way then? Because I'm sure you've had a relax. lot of like ups and downs in this crazy year. Because like, although you had a big platform before, you've like literally been thrown into the limelight. Yeah. So is that like... Definitely. Yeah, but like, you. I can say that now and be like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking at the minute. But don't get me wrong. I'm probably... F- needing to know that and hear that myself right now so yeah, yeah, yeah. probably need to listen to myself yeah <laughs> um so like talk, let's talk about molly before love island like before all of that kind of happened like you were obviously doing panto you mm-hmm. were doing your content and stuff like that. what was life like before Just love island kicked off literally living at home doing content from my bedroom day in day out just planning mm-hmm. content days what i want to work towards maybe like youtube ideas Mm. and that that was it and then you know getting ready for maybe panto at christmas Mm -hmm. and you said to me like early when we had like coffee you were like i was super happy like doing that before love island as well like you were super happy so what made you like think oh i'm gonna do either big brother or love island um i thought it was just let's try something different let's really step out let's try something completely different like i know i want to go down the presenting route but let's try this route why not Mm -hmm. i feel like i'm really open to opportunities and if it comes my way i'm like this has happened for a reason. Yeah, It's coming towards me because I clearly need to take this step and let's do it. Because mm-hmm. I, I knew for a fact Love Island was something I probably wouldn't feel too comfortable with. A big group of people away from home um, in a scenario that I'm probably not most comfortable with. Like it's really out of out of my vibes. Like, I don't know how, how I'll be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was very like open with all of this, like throughout my audition process as well. But clearly something was right. And mm-hmm. it just happened. So, and how did you find like the whole process? Like, if you look back on it now, because it was like you have had mm-hmm. like a few like ch- times to, I've got a few months to reflect on it. How do you look back at that period of time now? Does it feel like a blur? Does it feel like, you know, that, that it was a positive time, like a happy time? Like, when you look yeah. back, like, what do you think? I feel, I think back and I think of weirdly so many negatives, but they've turned into such a positive lesson. Right. Like, I learned so much about myself being in there. And then to actually find someone where I felt my peace and my calm and Mm -hmm. I found someone and then fell in love with them. And now, you know, Mm -hmm. everything's going great. It's, it's like, 
the little negatives that I was probably thinking about whilst I was there are so much of a bigger positive now when you really think about it. Mm -hmm. And then since coming out, how's life been since? I mean, it's been, it's been very busy, but very like just trying to find your feet again in a sense that like the biggest emotional roller coaster of my life was that period of time. Yeah. Let's just get back to a balance of like my emotions again. That must be again. hard though to find like, you know, like a balance after that. Cause like, you know, you see it with everyone. Like, you know, Sam Thompson was obviously huge before he's just been on our yeah. celebrity. And then he's come up now and you can just see the waves of like stuff that are just coming in his direction. And it must feel like, whoa, yeah. like it's a lot to take in. Definitely. Because there's, you know, there'll be people wanting to work with you, more followers, more comments, more messages. Yeah. Like it's a lot. Yeah. Like, and I'm a massive. admin is a lot. Like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, I'm a massive workaholic. So I never want to stop. Yeah. But like, I've got to tell myself to stop. Mm. Like, I was just telling her earlier, I went for a reading today um, and she was telling me I need to stop. And I was like, okay, yeah. well, this is the biggest sign I could possibly have. Yeah. Just more taking time for myself now because it has been full on. Mm -hmm. And just and just kind of just let, like take it all in. And the new year's coming up. So let's mm -hmm. like not burn out in 2023. Yeah, Let's absolutely. end it on a, on a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we love talking about on the Talk 20s podcast that like, you know, everyone, no matter you know, whether they're big so on social media, got a big platform, celebrity, whatever. Everyone has got some big adulting failures, things that they've messed up on, things that have gone wrong. Like it's totally normal mm -hmm. to experience failure. For you, is there something that you feel like, oh, that was a great big failure, but actually I feel like I learned a lesson from it or it could be funny. It can be sad. Like something where you think, feel like, oh, I did a big mess up there. Um, let me have a think. A big failure. And not, not one of them like stands out. Nothing yeah. jumps out at me. Because again, I feel like even when things have kind of gone wrong, it was kind of meant to be there. Even one of those. Because I feel like someone right now, they feel like, oh, like I don't know if I was supposed to go go for this job. Or I went I, for this job, yeah. I did it for two months and I hated it. But like... Potentially like, I remember going, so from drama school, I always said to myself, I'm going to go on cruise ships and I'm going to perform on cruise ships. That's okay, what I'm going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's kind of where I thought my life would go alongside social media. Um, but I remember going for my first cruise audition and it was just, I got there. I didn't have my headshot. You went to take your CV and your headshot to every audition. And I've been told that for three years straight. So I should have known to take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, got there. I just didn't have it. I'm thinking, oh my God, I don't even have it. And then everyone's warming up. So I'm like warming up. Like, yeah, I'm meant to be doing this. I'm really out of my comfort zone. I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Get in the room. Who hasn't got it? And I'm like, uh -huh. so I put my hand up and I'm like, I haven't got it. So I thought already I'm not getting the job because I'm not being funny, but if someone forgot something, I'm not going to take her on. So yeah, I thought, yeah. oh, damn it, Molly, like screw your head on. Um, but I thought, no, I'm proud of myself for even turning up. Going to the first room, we're doing this like kick routine, like really everyone's kicking their legs really high. Um, and I'm there thinking, I'm going to try my best. But I'm like in between like loads of people. It's very crowded. Everyone's kicking their legs. So I just stand and let everyone kick. Yeah. I'm like, kick then, <laughs> kick. Seriously, I don't want to be the one that knocks someone out. Just knock me out. <laughs> but then I wish I just went for it. Yeah. Why did I not go front row and go, let me show yeah, you yeah, yeah. and kick? I was like, Molly, like, come on. Like, what are you doing wrong? And then we go to um, the bit where they take the numbers out. I was the first one out. Where yeah. That was the first one out. So that was the moment where I walked out and was like, oh, you've trained for three years, Molly, yeah. to do this. How you've did you gone. feel after that? Because I think a lot of people would really beat themselves up oh, about yeah, it. Oh like, yeah, I definitely did. I found my mum up crying like, yeah. what am I doing? Like, this is not for me. But then I'm like, it is Molly because you've just trained for so long. You can do it. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. But guess what? If I was on a cruise ship, I'd be stuck. I'd miss home. I wouldn't be able to get any of my parcels. Mm -hmm. Like You wouldn't have Wi-Fi No Wi-Fi. Like, you know, couldn't really do like content creation. I could not Georgia, have done it. Georgia, who like is like um, our producer on the podcast, she's going on a cruise tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And she's told me I have zero Wi-Fi. Gaffy. There's no Wi-Fi on, the, on, no. on it. It's rubbish. And so. I couldn't have done it. So it's happened for yeah. a reason. But that was definitely a, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you've done panto since then. You've done other mm -hmm. like like um, acting and yeah. jobs and stuff. Where do you kind of see that side of things going? I'd love to take that further. Mm -hmm. I feel like I just don't know when and how yet. Um, so I think I'll stick with panto. I definitely love to do it next year. Um, I kind of took this year as like a let's just have mm -hmm. time. Work. Panto's a lot as well. Like it's how many shows and it's like two a day for like five weeks, five six wow. weeks. So it, it's yeah. a lot. It's yeah, a yeah. lot. Um, and yeah, maybe like even try the West End, mm -hmm. try and go down that route. Um, cause I know like you can get some Davies. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah like Amber Davies, absolutely. Mm-hmm. What she did is is exactly what I'd love to do. Yeah. 100%. And there's certain shows that I'd love to be in, even what if it's a short contract. In? Mrs. Doubtfire, the ensemble. <gasps> 100%. Mrs. Doubtfire yesterday. Did, what, did you go watch the it? Film, not, oh, not the musical. You need to go watch yeah, the musical. Yeah. The ensemble is incredible. Um, but even like, sounds so silly, the older roles I prefer. Yeah. So like <laughs> the grandma in Billy Elliot, if I'm like <laughs> getting on, get me in the grandma with Billy Elliot, like 100%. <laughs> so there's, there's roles I like come from away. There's some great characters in that. Mean Girls musical. Yeah. But then I like the mum. So I feel like I just need to wait. <laughs> I really need yeah, to wait for maybe these Maybe just wait until like, yeah, it'd be later in your career and you yeah. can go and do all of these. Yeah. Love it. Let's take a quick pause for a second. If you're an OG listener of the podcast, you'll know I haven't always had the easiest ride with my mental health in my 20s. Our newest paid partner, BetterHelp, which gives you access to online therapists, is something that's helped me immensely. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that. Whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with a therapist, in most cases within 48 hours or less. You'll then be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash talk 20s and that link will also get you 10% off your first month too. Um, So one of the other things that we love talking about on the podcast and I think it's really important and I think you're quite um, a good example of this is that you know, no one is perfect. Mm-hmm. Everyone is working on their own stuff. We just can't see it all. And we're all so guilty of putting our best bits online, like yeah. always. I think you're quite good at like keeping it real. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm sure there's other things that are kind of going on. For you, like what is it that you're working on right now that you'd like to get better at that you're probably like, you know, thinking, oh, I wish I'd get better at that now. Um, Probably still just to do with things within myself. So just getting back that confidence that I've kind of lost through anxiety and panic and almost just making myself feel nervous for no reason about very silly things Um, and controlling my emotions. That's massive. Like I was about to film an ad the other day. Um, I literally went to go and film it and I just started crying because of my skin. Mm. And it's like, get a grip. Like you literally preach about your skin. It's absolutely fine no matter the way it is, yet you're the one sat there crying. Mm -hmm. So whether you see me post a relatable post about my skin or how I'm feeling at the minute, I'm probably feeling the way you're feeling. I'm just being confident about it right now. Mm -hmm. So I feel like listening to myself more because I think I can tell people great things (laughs) and then not listen Mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. Do you find it like, do you feel like there's more of a spotlight on you now that like you feel those things? Because you said like your anxiety has increased since coming Mm -hmm. out. Like, do you you feel like a greater pressure or something? Yeah, definitely. A lot more pressure. But then also the pressure to do do right. So, you know, like I want to inspire younger girls inspire them, inspire them, inspire them. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it will come and it will come in time and let's mm-hmm. just relax on it. Like there's no stress to do anything today. Like, yeah, it's definitely a pressure thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's a lot and it's difficult when people like come out from a show and like they're all all of a sudden given this like great big spotlight. And it's like, I know from speaking to you that you have so many great plans of like what you want to mm-hmm. do with it. But like so many people can kind of, be swallowed up by that and I think it's it's really hard like do you get like support from like after the show for all of this kind of stuff what does that look like yeah you do so that's the therapy that I've actually taken up because they provide it afterwards you have so many free sessions um with any of the therapists that you've met throughout the process yeah so they already understand you they know you know how your time was in the villa so Mm -hmm. they really understand you and that's great but I think I just have the problem of like I want to do too much Right, like, yeah. I want to go into theatre. I want to go into podcasts. I want to go into um, music. I want to get into children's TV. It's like, <sighs> how are you going to do all of that? I, but I want to <laughs> yeah. do it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't. Do you think that that's like, do you think like we're guilty of that like as a generation though? Because I feel like what TikTok has done is opened us up to like a world of possibility mm-hmm. and content creation, a world of possibility. Like there are so many different things and different ways that you can take Mm. your career that it's really exciting but it's also really hard to make a decision and to not feel like you want to do it all at once yeah and also that you should know now yeah it's like no you shouldn't Mm -hmm. you don't need to know yet even if you think you've got it figured out guess what five years time you might look back and think I did not have anything figured out whatsoever Yeah. yeah let's just see where it goes yeah what are the plans for you and Zach then? Like going for are you going to move in? Like I'm sure everyone's asking you all these questions. Next but... year we want to travel. Okay. So kind of, we want to work whilst we travel, but not focus too heavily on that. Yeah. I think I'm obviously going to carry my YouTube. I know Zach wants to get into YouTube with his fitness. Yeah. And he's really into his me- mental health journey. And I know he's wanting to plan a lot of exciting things for next year. So 
I feel like we've got some really good things planned. We're going to be traveling and just really like just posting about it all, but really mm-hmm. like travel content, doing what we love. Yeah. Love um, yes, yeah, so it'll be a year of like very different things. Um, and then just see, see from there really. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's it's honestly like you are a breath of fresh air. Like I don't think like you realise, but you definitely inspire so many young girls. Like I know you're like stressed. I really yeah, want to inspire yeah. them, but you are doing that, like doing what you're doing. So I, I feel like so. you've got to give yourself a little pat on the back. Yeah. But it's been amazing to have you on the podcast. This has honestly flown by so, so fast. Yes. Um, have we even started? I have <laughs> barely even started. Um, but yeah, like I, I think like one of the things that we always talk about on the podcast is kind of looking back at our younger self mm-hmm. and kind of what would we want to tell them that would kind of see us through our 20s. So if you could give a piece of advice to like younger you, what would you want to say to younger Molly? I think no matter what, the ending will always be as you imagined. It will always be successful. It'll always be great. Yeah. So no matter what comes within that time, just take it as a lesson, a learning curve. You'll be fine. And the ending will always be great. So mm-hmm. just go through all that rubbish and mm-hmm. just ride the roller coaster, I think. I think like it's so true, like, your 20s literally are a roller mm-hmm. coaster. There are so many like yeah. ups and downs. And they are time to just work yeah. things out. A hundred percent. Like, is there something where you look back now on your earlier 20s that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that I did that. But actually like it led me to so many different other things. Um, I'd say, I'd say moving out to drama school. Yeah. Because it was 15 when I moved out and then went back home afterwards. But I feel like that made me mature so quick mm-hmm. by doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then with your, when you move back home, like, did you, cause a lot of people like when they move back home from like moving out, they, it, it's like, I know you've got a great relationship with your family, but was that tough at all moving back home? Like no. after you've had that independence, you're lucky, you know, cause that's you know not what? the case for a lot of people. It wasn't. Yeah. I feel like I was always coming home on weekends anyway, cause I didn't really? go out, didn't yeah, want to yeah. drink. Cause I'd go home, see my sister. And then when I'm like living away anyway. I'd be on FaceTime, like, how do I cook an egg? Like literally yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. So going home was really easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. You kind of always got a nice, safe place yeah. to come back to Absolutely. no matter where you go in the world. And I'm sure when you do all your traveling with Zach, it'd be nice to be like, I just want to go home and see, yeah. see my family. <laughs> have, a, have a week so, at home. Yeah. Well, amazing to have you on the podcast. Thank I cannot you. wait to see everything that you do in 2024. Good luck with it. And I'm sure Thanks. we will see you on our West End stages, TV <laughs> children's screens, to your screens. And, and so much more. Um, <laughs> in the years to come so thank you thanks for having me